I was the uh, attendant to a movie theater. You know, the projectionist. I, projectionist. Mm -hmm. and, Once uh, in a while, I'd get the the uh, film mixed up. Oh yeah. Not very often, but it did happen. <laughs> So, so explain to Jacob, why were you the projectionist at the movie theater? Why did you get that job? I don't remember now. Well, what was going on at the time? Was it World War II? Yeah. And so where were all the people that normally were the projectionists? In the service. Right. They all had gone to the war. And so, how old were you? I don't remember exactly, but... What probably. grade were you? Well, probably freshman in high school. Uh huh. Like ninth grade, maybe fourteen. So talk about when you were a little boy living in Kansas. What was it like living in Kansas with um, Alta and Virgil Young? Well, my father more or less disappeared. My mother was killed in an automobile accident. How old were you when that happened? It was a baby, a new baby. How old were you when when your mother was killed in the car accident? Uh, two or three years old. No, two months old. Two months old, yeah. So what happened? How did you end up living with your grandparents? Well, I had a twin sister and the family was just uh, trying to decide who's going to take the girl and who's going to take the boy. And my grandmother said, I'm not going to separate the twins. So she raised us. And what was the economy like at the time? Not good. It was the Great Depression. Remember uh, the year? 1929. Early 30s. Well, Ron was born in June of 1929. Okay. And that's when the crash happened, the Wall Street crash, yeah. and then the economy went into a deep, deep, deep depression. And lots of people were out of work. How about um, when you first started flying? How old were you when that happened? High school. High school? I had a pilot slide that's in high school. And how did you get that? What did you do to get a pilot's license? Well, I had to work to earn enough money to rent an airplane. And how, what did you do? Do you remember what you did? Hold watermelons? Probably. Uh -huh. I hold a lot of watermelons. To get a little bit of time to fly. Yeah. So how, how many hours did it take you to learn to solo? Two hours. But what did you see in Colorado for the first time in your life that changed your life? Well, I drove my Model A across Colorado. And what did you see? What was out there that looked different? Mountains. Than I've never seen a mountain Mountain. in my life. <laughs> he hasn't gotten over it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about how you became a, uh, a helicopter mechanic. I was interested in flying to start with, you know, so it's part of that whole arena just trying to learn about how to fly. So, did you take classes to learn how to be an aircraft engine mechanic? I'm sure I did. No, you didn't. You read all the manuals and you passed the test without ever going to a day of school. You were in Korea. Do you remember the, um, the scariest moment from Korea? Well, there were a lot of them. I was part of the forward echelon, so I used to go up and to watch the war going on. Yeah. And you could see the enemy troops. The enemy troops could see you. And um, I survived a mortar attack without getting a scratch. Well, some people were killed, you know. So it was kind of a dumb choice. Watch the war. Up and watch the war. What about when you went out to guard the helicopter that had been downed in no man's land? 
Well, yeah, I had to spend a night. There wasn't so much that it needed protection from the enemy. It was that all the local guys were t- taking parts off of the damn helicopter, you know. <laughs> so I had to stand on guard to make sure the helicopter stayed there. And what happened in the middle of the night? Mm-hmm. Well, they had an interruption. Can what was? You, tell you? me about the interruption. Well, do you remember? People were trying to take parts off of the helicopter. Uh, the, the, the Chinese. Yeah. The North Koreans came in the middle of the night. And, and I'm standing guard. But you had crawled inside to stay warm, right? Yeah. And so they come up. And tried to look in the windows. What did they see? Me. But Except it was, they couldn't see They you. couldn't see because it was still dark. If they could see you, what would have happened? I probably wouldn't be here today. Mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't either. That's right. <laughs> Talk about your airplanes. Did you have an airplane? What well, did you I have? I had a Cessna 180. And I traded it in on a Cessna 210. So the difference between the, the 180 and the 210? The Cessna planes? Yeah. Can you tell me what it is? Well, I don't remember too much right now. 180 was not the top of the line. The 210 was the top of the line. But 180, what was the what was the configuration? Wasn't it a tail dragger? Yes. I've heard stories that you would come by and buzz the cabin. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about why you did that and at what well, time? Well, we kept a car down at Bass Lake. Yeah. So when I was time to come home. I buzzed the cabin so she should come down and pick me up. How close did you get? How close? Yeah. Well, pretty damn close, <laughs> probably. Everybody in fish camp knew what was happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, what plane did you have at that time? No, the 180. No. 180. 180. Yeah. How many seats did I have? Well, it was a four-place or five-place, right? Four. Yeah. So we could, you know, with little kids, Sweet. our whole family could sit in it. Yeah. So what was your favorite place to go in that airplane? Why was Where small? did you like to go in the airplane? What kind Today? of... Today? No. The airplane well, you had. all over and gone. Uh-huh. I just do the doing work from Nevada to Southern California. So you would fly two or three times a week Mm -hmm. to Southern California? Yep. Mm -hmm. 42 schools. So uh, did you ever go on vacation in your plane? Oh, I'm sure. Where did we go on vacation? That's right. No. (laughs) (laughs) To Mexico. To Baja. Didn't we go to Baja, California? Did you uh, did you land on a, at an airstrip or did you land on the beach? A strip. A strip. Short strip. Short strip. Dirt strip. The problem with a short strip is the short strip was at Bass Lake, and if you didn't get your wheels on the very front of the runway, you were dead. Yeah. It's a short runway. Yeah. And you flew in there people all the time. Died landing an airplane in Bass Lake. How many? 22. 22. And so it's no longer a, a runway. It's been built over. Uh, how long ago was that? Do you remember? Not for sure. No, they, they closed that. They closed the runway um, probably at least 30 years ago. And initially they closed it, but people kept flying. Then they put big mounds of dirt on the runway so you couldn't land. That kind of destroyed its ability to be a runway. So tell them the story about how I uh, came down to um, shine the lights on the runway for you. <laughs> you tell <laughs> it. <laughs> Opa, I want to I hear you tell it. 
Well, she blinded the runway. She would park where the lights were shining down the runway and I couldn't see the runway to land. <laughs> He had just told me, go to the end of the runway and shine the lights if I'm coming in really late so I can see. But he didn't say, go down to the end by the lake and shine the other direction. So I shone them in his eyes and blinded him. Coming. <laughs> Fortunately, he came in anyway. So were there uh, any phones back then? We did not have a phone here. Yeah? We did not have a phone and uh, no TV, no phone. And that's why he couldn't call me he had to, to buzz go. The cabin. Yeah, he had to buzz the cabin so I would know to go pick him up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like to fly around Half Dome? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet. So, um, Opa, how many times have you climbed Half Dome? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. So you came to California, and you lived in the Bay Area, and you came to Yosemite. And then, would you set up trips for you and your friends to come up and climb Half Dome? Yeah. So you must have been in your 20s, do you think, when you started that? It's sort of a different section of a hike to climb the cables on Half Dome. Why? 550 feet of straight up almost. Um, speaking of Yosemite, so... After after Korea, when you came here and saw that this cabin was for sale, do you remember that? Do you remember that story? How did you happen to buy the cabin? Tell the story of how you happened to buy the cabin. Well, I was driving through a fish camp one day. Mm -hmm. guy was nailing a for sale site out front. Twenty minutes later, I bought the cabin. Yeah? Uh, how much was it? Eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars? And how much it's worth today? Over a million. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you spend time working on it? Yeah. It's four thousand feet. So how did it get to be four thousand feet? Labor. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the biggest changes that have happened in your life? Biggest changes? Mm -hmm. Betty Sue. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is that, Ronnie D? Why do you think? <laughs> do you have any, uh, any other changes that just the world is different since you were little, maybe? Mm, I don't know. Change this place from 1,200 square feet to 4,000. 